Welcome everybody to Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company's Thursday Live. Once again, Brett Wingfield and Tom Matuska here at your service. And uh, we've been just chugging right along in the smallmouth bass yeah. project. And the last, um, is this our fourth? Third. Fourth? fourth. Oh, I think it's fourth, yeah. Um, we, can, we can <laughs> drag a mounting project out for a long time Too long. to keep you informed. Um, and what we're talking about, what we've talked about in the past is the use of artificial fins and artificial heads. And um, the heads, we talked about um, ones with the throats in them. You built a nice throat for them the other day. Um, if you were to get a, a head without a throat, um, all the different major supply companies carry some of these artificial heads. Um, some are really exceptional, exceptional. Most are molded from a real fish head and then cast from that, probably modeled to perfection. Um, the advantage of using an artificial head is there's no rebuilding to do up here, which, which we spend a lot of time rebuilding the underneath portion of the jaws, the gills, uh, you know, the eye, this even has eyes. Yeah. I know, the eyeball in it. Um, top of the heads, lips, all of this shrinks tremendously, and it's very nice if you don't have to model that all in. It's not a problem to do, but it's, uh, some people do it better than others. You're fabulous at that portion, and you actually are a sculptor, and you're re-sculpting the shrunken areas of that fish. So you save yourself a whole lot of time, and it's a trade-off. You're gonna get a better product than the shrunken head, less work, but you will have to pay for it. It's not free like the yes. fish head is. So that's the, that's the purpose for an artificial fish head. We also use, we also start talking about uh, fish fins, yes. and this is an example. We had a, a pike in, and this is an example of, I mean, I've got a whole pile of, these are all from the same fish. Now, that's what that customer would have got back. We could put a backing on a fin like that, and we can recolor it, and we can sculpt in the missing webbing between the rays, uh, but I would probably end up with an inferior fin. Now, what if you buy the appropriate sized artificial fish fin? It's all complete. You can take a little, we like to take a little Dremel tool and we kind of sculpt the edge so it's not perfectly smooth. Paint that and it's gonna be a beautiful fish fin. So that's the reason we do that. And you can replace one fin. Um, this smallmouth, I think he has, most of his fins are a little tattered, but uh, this was a good reason for this. Here's his fins, and it looks, when it's like this, it's probably happened in the freezer. Hopefully the customer's freezer, not your freezer. And by cutting that tail off and replacing it with the appropriate size tail fin, um, you can turn this otherwise not very attractive fish skin into a really, really beautiful mounted smallmouth bass. So that's what we've been talking about in the last um, three sessions. And we got this set up. We showed you how to make the head removable. You don't have to do it this way. We use a little square stock. And we used a little uh, brass tube, is that what it is, brass? Um, and this index is right in. They come in a set. So now we can take that off and put it on so we can take it off to mount the fish. Um, the fins we like to make detachable. You can take the fins off. You can paint them. You can paint the head. You can have it all ready to go and you can kind of uh, stick it all back together. So that's what we've been talking about. If you have any questions on anything that you've gone back and looked at that we've done, make sure that you uh, text, text the questions and the girls will read them to us and we'll try to um, like you on, on what we did if we didn't make it plain enough. And what do they have to do? Like and share, like and share, like and share? Yes. Yes. I try to memorize that term. Like and share. And that gets them into a little bonus drawing, weekly drawing that sure. you do. Sure, sure, sure. Tell them more about that at the end. Now, um, this fish, we also showed you how to make a pattern because even if you're using a 
commercially purchased body, a lot of times they don't fit when you get them. I always say if you, if you order the body you think you need, you better order one smaller and one bigger, and one of those three is gonna fit, and the other two will go on the shelf for the next time, because mm -hmm. it is difficult. There's, you're dealing with the thickness of the fish skin, which sometimes does not, um, you know, bass uh, skin, walleye skin is kind of thick, and it adds a lot more to the circumference of the fish than you think it does. Not so much the lengths, but the circumferences. So it's very nice. Um, you made that pattern for this smallmouth, and take plenty of measurements. That way when you get your commercial body, if that's the route you choose to go, you can compare your commercial body measurements to the measurements you took, and you can see if it's gonna fit or not. So it's always handy. Even if we're gonna use a commercial body, we will always take a good set of measurements. Or if you're gonna carve a body, um, I think you showed them how to carve a body and on a couple smallmouth, and uh, you want a nice set of measurements you know, to compare when you carve the body. I said the other day, we always save our commercial bodies because, or I mean our patterns because customers will come in and, you know, every once in a while you'll have somebody that thinks their fish was bigger, never smaller, but never a little bit bigger than what you gave them. Um, it's always nice to be able to pull back, pull out that measurement sheet and say, this is, this is what you brought us. Um, so then we showed you how to skin the fish, and this is just a commercial mount, it's not gonna be a competition mount or anything, so um, what we did in the back of the body is, I think you bonded in, uh, we like to use heavy wire, and that's, is that eight gauge? I think so. Maybe yeah. eight gauge annealed wire. Um, you have a choice of galvanized or annealed, and annealed is not as bouncy, uh, it bends a little bit easier. It's a little bit easier for us to work with. So I think um, last week or maybe a couple weeks ago, Brett um, bored up through this hole way up into the front, way up into the back, and branched out in a couple little tunnels, poured auto body putty in there, and we have that wire going way up in here. So when we put this fish on the old driftwood base or rock base, we'll be able to turn it when I'm going down after a crawdad, we could do something like that. It makes a really nice sturdy mount. We love uh, setting up our fish like that. We could bring the heads out from the wall, into the wall, tails out from the wall, into the wall. And it would work well too for a competition fish if you wanted to put it in a different place. It doesn't have to be right in the middle of the back. Um, same with the head attachment. That makes a good connection to the body too. Um, Once upon a time, I did a big competition jump in musky, and I used probably a uh, half inch steel bar because this fish was like a 48 inch fish and when it came time to do my water splashes and things like that I have this big bar to hide <laughs> so at two in the morning before the competition I'm trying to cover it with acrylic water and that didn't work so then we tried painting it white and covering it with acrylic water that didn't work um, Chrome, you would think? No, that didn't work. <laughs> uh, it was a disaster. Right, it was kind of nice. My point of attachment was not as good as it should have been. Your square attachment sack that you guys were talking about, you have a question on that? To show that in the head? Can yeah, I do? Yeah. So those are two sizes. And it comes this way. You get it with the brass tube as well as the steel stock. You can cut it. Um, I mean, we just cut a little piece of this off. Part of it went up into, this went into the body, this went into the head. You can do the, the opposite way too, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's a perfect fit. So you could technically get about three to four, three probably. Uh, I think you could get you three could easy. Yeah, certainly. And but there's, no, there's no wiggle. 675, I think is a small, and 795. But there's your size difference. Now I think you've used those on your competition fish too before, have you not? I think every one of them. Yeah, yeah. It's a really yeah. nice, in, in really nice, discreet method of attachment. Um, very sturdy and and convincing. Mm -hmm. Very small. Um, a tip for cutting the brass: a little Dremel cut-off wheel, and keep the keep a little piece of the post inside the brass so you make that cut. Push it out. So, yeah. Yeah. So you don't yeah. cave in that brass. What adhesive do you use with the rod? 
we've used five minute epoxy. Um, Gosh, yeah, this was, this was five minute epoxy up into here. You could use auto body putty yeah. and rough it up. I like to rough it up. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take a sander or a Dremel or a side cutters or something yep. like that. And if you rough this up, it's- You it, rough the metal up. Yeah, yep, both on the pieces, outside. Outside of the- Not down here where it's gonna slide into the brass, right. but the part that's gonna get glued up into the head. Yep. And when you're ready, when, when the fish is, ready to assemble for final final assembly um whoops, come back Goldie. um we just put epoxy on that push it right up on yep. and epoxy scope or clay or whatever material you want to use to blend your union works very good works very great well. product we like that we use it a lot okay now um i think i'm going to show you we got a couple things to do. I've skinned and scraped this fish. He's been um, pickled. We need to um, cut the fins off. Uh -huh. Now there's a couple different ways to do it. We're gonna, sh we're gonna do one, but you can mount this fish with his fins on, pose the fins. After he dries, you can cut the fins off and replace them with your artificial yep. fins. Or um, what you like to do is cut these fins off now that's going to leave your, your void where the fins are, mount the fish skin, pull the fish skin up to where it would meet the mm -hmm. fins, and then pin it into place and let it dry. Yep. And that's what we're going to do today for you. So that's one thing we have to do. The fish pickle, I think it was even on the um, Facebook, the fish pickle was nothing more than borax, salt, protex free soap, a little bit of bactericide. And um, we've used that for years and years and years and years, and it's served us very, very well. Absolutely. Um, do you want to start showing them how to cut the fins off? Yeah. Um, another thing, we've test fitted this fish, and this is a, a commercial mount. If it's a competition mount, you're going to want your skin to touch flawlessly, um, even a little bit on the loose side because you are going to encounter a slight bit of shrink. Um, we're going to have a slight gap on the back of the work. I think he's going to touch down here and touch up here, but we'll have a small little gap and um, if you cut those fins off and while you're doing that I will talk to them about glues because sure. we're going to want to glue this fish skin onto that fish body. Did you have a little scalpel Oh there? I do. I put a brand new blade in for you too. How do the Boy Scouts do that? They hand it and then you got to say thank you thank before you. you take it. There you go. I knew there's rules. I didn't get much past the birdhouse part. <laughs> so fun. Girl Scouts, I think I made a pillow and that was out. <laughs> um, okay, so I am going to remove these fins and, and we'll do them all the same. I'm going to come down the fin just like this. And I'm starting on the back side. You could start on the front. But I'm going to actually go all the way down the fin to the last of the scales. And if we choose to trim that little bit off later, we can. But for right now, I'm just going to come in here. And I'm going to trim with a nice brand new sharp scalpel blade. Right along those fin edges. And I'll go around both sides. And you can do this with the scissors too. It does interrupt your scales just a little bit. But um, you'll just continue to go all the way around. Scissors over there, I can show them the scissors too. Thank you. Just like that. And we'll come right to the front. Oh, did I tell you they didn't send an anal fin? Or is that a. <laughs> this is the dorsal fin. Oh. <laughs> or not um, just like that and we'll come right around the front like so and then continue the rest of the way around and we'll do that for each fin 
take them all off. We'll do the tail, the paired fins, and the dorsal. Like that. go right back up over these little fin pedestals on the on the body. Now do you have to worry about ripping that or anything like you do on a bird? You know, you get a hole on a bird and you start stretching and do they tear very easy? You could in the soft in the soft skin. Typically the back of the animal fin doesn't tear too bad. The front not too bad um, because there's not as much thin membrane there. But um, you can encounter that a little bit more around the paired fin, the pectoral, and pelvic, where you have no scales, where it's real thin, smooth skin, um, that can open up and tear. You do want to be careful with that as you go around. Got it. Okay, while well, you keep doing that, mm -hmm. I'll uh, show them now. We, you don't have to. We usually take the fish body off of the stand. We like to remove them. Um, you could easily mount him on here if you wanted to. And Absolutely. sometimes we will even put this onto one of our deer mounting stands and you can mm -hmm. manipulate it a little bit. Um, it works fine if you take it off. So we have two screws back here to hold that wire. I'm going to loosen those. And we just use these stands over and over and they kind of work real good. Now I bent this wire and it's usually a pretty heavy wire. So we'll take a, just a small piece of pipe like this and stick it in here. And you can bend that wire up almost straight. It saves your hands and it'll pull right out. Then we'll set the stand aside until we're ready for it. And now at this point you can take that fish, you can, you can test fit in, um, you can uh, you know, get your fins on there, get your head, like when we're putting the head on it's kind of nice to hold this like that so you can kind of balance it. Okay, and when, when we mount this fish we like to use some kind of a hide paste, just like you would on a deer head, a glue that's going to glue that skin onto the fish body. So there's, we've used Dermagrip before, we've used uh, oh any of the hide paste that are good for deer heads, we've used all of those before, but one of our easiest and our go-to, and it's something we always have in the shop, is um, acrylic latex pot. And that's one of the better um, fish glues, allows the, allows the skin to slide. It, um, bonds very, very well. A lot of times if you're using a fish mannequin that isn't very white, it's real nice to have a, a white caulk that's going to give you a, a light underlayment so your body color doesn't protrude through the skin. So we carry it in clear and white. You're saying you prefer the white? I prefer, I have clear right here, but I prefer white. <laughs> and when I grab it, I grab clear, but it's going to work just fine. And we're just going to empty this entire, whenever I make fish glue, it's not usually for one fish. So I will take one or two tubes and I will empty them into a Tupperware container like this. This is your automated cocker. Mm -hmm. Need it. Yeah, so you do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> um, now, someone asked the other day about, and you guys were talking about Pro One. Mm -hmm. Can you use Pro One for fish high paste? Um, it works really well as a fish glue if you don't have borax in your fish soak recipes. Um, Pro One and borax, my understanding is they're not very compatible. So if you don't have uh, if you eliminate the borax from your fish process, then absolutely, and it does make a good glue, a good fish glue. 
Now I'm just going to make a little bit here. Um, this is planning to do this fish, and I'm going to add a very, very small amount of water. Um, the water goes a long ways. And then I'm going to stir it up with my brush. If you use the caulk straight out of the tube, I have trouble getting it on there too thick, and then I get fingerprints when I'm holding the fish and dents in the fish. It does not take very much water. And I think I got this from the old Roger Martin videos where he would uh -huh. inject his fox feet and coon feet and everything with uh, cock, latex cock. Wow. John says he uses Pro One without a problem. Because we are having trouble getting Derma Grip in right now. I'll make a little bit more. Yeah, this old COVID-19 thing kind of put the wrench in a lot of this, a lot of these supply companies trying to replenish their supply. It's pretty interesting. What consistency are you looking for with that? Um, soft pudding. Soft pudding. Mm -hmm. That's a that's like a very descript consistency. Tapioca without the little frog eyes in it. <laughs> I do not like tapioca. Don't you? No. It's the best. It's a texture thing. It's the best. The frog eyes. No. That's like you guys adding cottage cheese to your yogurt. Nope. No, that's weird. <laughs> oh, that's weird. That's weird. I can't do that. I like those two. Nope. Okay, this is kind of a consistency. I want to brush on consistency. I want some body to it, but I don't want it so thick that when I pick up the fish, if I don't catch myself um, leaving a dent where a thumbprint was or anything like that. Would you bring me just a little bit of white fish clay? Some kind of soft, lighter clay. And if these fins are good, we always spread fins like this and save them and put them in a box, dry them. That's a secret. Put them in a box because even though we're replacing the fins on this fish, this fin isn't bad and it would make a very good replacement somewhat sometime. Or lots of times we'll even cut pieces out. I think pieces out of that fin um, and patch damaged fins. That's my favorite. That works well. Can't have enough of those around. Now if you're doing any clay work on the fish, we have our favorite clay and it's, uh, we call it white fish clay. It's a white porcelain clay and when we foamed, we extended this tail a little bit and these commercial bodies are easy to sand down, rasp down, file down. Um, the tail was a little short according to my measurements, so we cut it and extended it, but the foam that we foamed it back in with was not under pressure, so it doesn't fill out quite like it. we want it to. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this porcelain fish clay, and I'm going to feather it in here so that we don't see a dent in the fish in the finished product. Can you use any clay, or are you sticking with white because we were sticking with white because of the color. We like that a lot. Um, dark clay. Um, we used to use a lot of critter clay, and the original critter clay I don't think came in white. It was a dark gray. And we would put it in walleye cheeks and the heads, and it would always telegraph through the skin, and we'd get a real black head. Remember that? Uh -huh, and uh, now they make a white critter clay, which is which is nice. This is this is uh, regular white fish clay. And what's the difference between the fish clay and the critter clay, uh, other than color? The white fish. Great question. You know, white fish. They come from the Great Lakes. White fish. I do. And they make they, they boil them up and thing? they make clay so, out of it. Uh, I, I knew it was a Wisconsin it product. Like white fish. Uh, anyway, no, yeah, they make fish boils out of those white Chase fish. Tastes as good as walleye. <laughs> and. Uh, 
Critter clay is very, very, very hard. When it's dried, it has a lot of, I guess I'd call it integrity, very strong clay. Um, and this is much softer and it's nice to use because it's, um, we don't need a hard clay here. We don't need right. anything holding something together. And just make sure you feather it on there really nice and just kind of joining the front to the back there. And while you do that, I'll show them I've got all the fins removed. And this is what we've got. Our paired fins are removed here. Tail. And it's important to make sure that you're removing the tail all the way up to the, to the leading edge. all the way up here so that will match that contour on the body ready for this I am I think you I think it's pretty smooth nothing that will show up on camera anyway <laughs> okay and I just feather that in so there's no lumps and bumps yeah. and dips there's that and now this has been test fit already. Is that correct? Well, kind of. You know if it's good, confident, feel good? If it's not tight, it's not right. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I've, I've heard you say that a time or two. <laughs> Customers don't pay for little fish. <laughs> uh, okay, so shall we glue it up and put them on? I'm ready. All right, so I'm gonna take just a little bit of our clear white glue, white clear glue. And I'll put that out of your way. And we're just going to put a small, thin coat here. You could put this on the body if you'd like. Um, I'm putting it on the skin. We're going to stay just a little ways back of the thin openings. You ask what consistency. If you make that too thin, it will all run out your, where you cut off the anal fin and the pelvic fins, it'll all, all run out. and it'll be a mess. Yes. So, you so wanna... it's nicest if it has some body yep. and it'll stay where you put it. And you can see now, I, I started with a pretty good amount on my brush, but I've got it worked out pretty thin. And worth noting, this skin has been rinsed after the pickle. It's been rinsed really, really well. Um, you wanna make sure your skins are nice and clean. I'm clean of all debris and clean of, of your salt residue or borax residue, any, anything that was in your pickle. And uh, now I think we're gonna stick him on the mannequin. If I take him like so, I'm just gonna take the show side. I'm gonna set him right on there, making sure that I've got all of my fins aligned. And all of your known points you probably hear us as we do any kind of taxidermy work. It's, it's the taxi and the dermy part. The taxi is to move the skin. And we want to make sure that we've got the skin properly aligned. I just had a little bit of bone there that I can get rid of. Um, so we're going to taxi the skin or the dermis into alignment with the with the mannequin. And you can see these known points on the body align very well with what we have on the skin. So it's nice to be able to put a pin in those. And I will here in just a second. Don't short yourself here in this in this alignment time. Make sure that you're getting your skin properly positioned. I'm going to use a few pins. These are these are the Euro pins, and this is actually a preference for for doing this because we can slide these Euro pins in right up under the scales and never hurt 
the existing scale pattern, um, they don't leave a big intrusive mark. So we like to put a few of those in. They're thin in diameter and, and uh, nice and sharp so they go in nicely. I'm going to pin again the known so I know right where this um, dorsal quits. I'm going to pin that in place. Now we carry the three sizes of Euro pins. Mm -hmm. Is there a preference for certain things that you use different sizes for? We the black ones, the long ones are great for birds. I love those. Great for birds. Um, and we use them on a fish occasionally. Yeah. We use a lot of the green ones on smaller fish, the orange yeah. ones. They go by millimeters and I think I think the orange is seventy and the green might be fifty and yeah, and um, and the diameter's a little bit smaller on each one. Yeah. So the green is a little smaller diameter, leaves a little. They're handy. They're like hole. acupuncture pins. I'm told. I yeah, wouldn't know. they are. Really? You yep. would know? I oh my gosh! That. We have a neighbor who is a physical therapist who uses acupuncture quite a bit, and he had his wife do it on him and have her insert the spins straight, he had her slide them down a straw. So they went in really nice and straight. He told the straw, show her where, and shoot them in. And what? Shoot them in. Yeah, I don't know why people do it for fun or enjoyment. It's not. Uh, no, it's terrible. <laughs> this is like a glove, Derek says. <laughs> Almost like we planned it. There we go. Um, now you are going to adhere the skin. Right? Fasten it? Yeah. I think yeah. we're pretty well aligned. Okay, that's a kind of a pretty good fit, isn't it? It is. It's an excellent fit. Okay, now um, hand me yes. my little gray thing. If if this is a now, if you carve the body, you can't staple it. The the right. Foam is too soft and it'll bounce out. On a purchase body, um, you can actually use a stapler, either a spring, spring-loaded stapler. Um, I'm using a pneumatic stapler. If I were sewing this fish, um, I like big needles that I can get a hold of. You know, I'm not concerned about any holes in the back because Tim. Uh, I'm not concerned about any holes in the back, and this will put a little hole in your skin. But it's something I can get a hold of really, really well. And I think this might be a number four, four inch or something like that is called. Um, it's pretty handy. Otherwise, some people like the big, they're called post-mortem and they're a big S-shaped needle. Something you can get a hold post -mortem. of. Post-mortem. I don't make up the names. Um, that fish is not live yet, but he's going to be live when we get done. Right. Um, I like to, uh, this is something you can grab onto and the fish is kind of slippery and slimy and you can get a hold of it. And, and get that going through those scales sometimes can be difficult. Also, when you're sewing, it's much easier to go under a scale than through it. Yes. You're going to really yep. hurt your fingers if you keep going through it. Yep. So we're going to staple this fish skin. The thing that I'm concerned about is I want to make sure that I don't pull that skin because I have all oh, three eighths to a half inch incision gap back there. And we finish all this, we'll finish all the back, we'll texture scales in there, even on our commercial fish. We'll make that look really nice. But I'm still gonna have a little bit of a gap. If I pull that too tight, which I probably could, I may open up your, yes. your fin gap yeah. too far. So, uh, I'm doing it on a towel. Um, you can do it, whatever you do, don't hurt the fish skin. If I'm laying it on a towel, I wouldn't do that on crappie probably. I would put it on a slippery table. Yes, question? Greg wants to know if that skin will shrink quite a bit. It will want to shrink. We're going to try to do everything we can not to let it shrink, but yeah, fish skin yeah. shrinks. You're just yeah. not going to stop it. It's, uh, it's leather in a drying position. Now, if my skin is together, like here, um, one staple turned in an angle, you can make the neatest, in, neatest skin fastening together ever, whatever the term is, incision, uh, by taking the stapler and turning it sideways, and you can staple and make a very narrow repair 
down the yes. back. That's, yes, that's our favorite. Um, I do have a place here where that's not gonna be possible and here where that's not gonna be possible. So I'm gonna go along the bottom and go along the top. If you do that, make sure that this is still aligned. You don't wanna pull things off to, you know, yeah. make it un alignment to come off. And worth noting too, they, you can mount the skin with the fins on and remove them later. Um, if you wanted to do that, make sure everything stays. I knew that was coming. Just kidding. It happens. Now I'm using probably 40 PSI, I'm going to guess. So you're not wanting to sink the staple, it's just ending up flush to the skin. Right, so we can even take those staples out later if they're going to bother you or force them in. Now, everything still seems to be in a line check. Check as you go so that you didn't pull something off. Um, if you did, it's not a problem to pop a few staples out and keep right on going. Um, sometimes we'll use needle nose pliers or um, little forceps like that. And I can pull that together. And here, my incision is so close. I can do, do it like that. And you can see why we talked about um, having your fish skin salted and in the, a little tub and your body's all prepared. Um, you can see how you could mount a lot of fish doing it like that. Now here I'm not gonna, not gonna be able to hit both the top and the bottom edge. And even for competition and stuff, sometimes you don't even staple or sew, right? You'll put them together and, and babysit them. We've done that before too. Let the glue take care of it. You go get me dry, brad nails, but I bet I can do that little thin skin right there with a stapler too, can I? Staples you use? Um, I'm using three A's. We use a lot of three A's for everything around here, I guess. Um, I could use longer, shorter, shorter sometimes doesn't, um, you know, it'll pull out a little bit. I'm just going to grab this fish skin and you want to be a little careful, careful when you stretch things so you don't pull it. Now this looks like it's going to come right up to your fin pretty nice. To worry about the ripples from the high paste inside um you'd want to smooth it out really nice and smooth just and your hand water i like to take it over to the sink and we could do that take it over to the sink and keep him really nice and clean especially any clays that way the clay doesn't dry on the skin and yeah clay and any kind of debris gets works up worked mm -hmm. up under the scales um this fish skin is not to me it's beautiful and to you it's beautiful, but to uh, people that don't, to you it's probably not beautiful, you know. Yes. Um, you, can, you can tell that um, this is going to turn out really, really nice and it's nice to be able to um, keep them really clean and you just know what you're going to have at the end if you've done this enough. 
They think, mm -hmm, looks very nice. I did grab two of your um, Euro pins if you want to grab the black one just to show the size of them, the difference. There's quite a big difference with the long one versus the big one. So those are your three sizes. You called that green, I call it hot yellow. No, I'd call it chartreuse. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah. Anybody buy fish and lures will know it's chartreuse. Chartreuse. Um, yeah, it's yellow, but it's got a green bias. Got it. And I learned that bias. I learned that from I think from Createx. Different colors have biases. So when you when you look at a red, but man, it's almost to an orange. It's a red. You know, it's an orange with a red bias. Someone had that on Facebook the other day. Pink shirt or purple shirt, and it's like that is so not purple. You guys need to go see something. <laughs> Czech and oh Bohemian. Goodness. Czech and Bohemian. Yep, so much. Yep, Jeff. There's people out there that will know what I'm saying. I can't believe you didn't teach me that growing up. Baby, I did. <laughs> Baby, the Czech will know. Now, if you want to put this back on so you can work on it, I just slid that wire back in, bent it over. Um, I lost one of my screws. I will, oh, here. Um, and we'll put a couple screws right back in. And you're just letting the head of the screw overlap the wire on either side so it doesn't. Yeah. Let me turn around and I'll show you. I put one screw in and I'll just move that wire right over tight to it. Then I'm going to get as close as I can to the wire on the other side. Um, it's a great way to Oops, well, oh, didn't even go through my hand. It's a great way to hold <laughs> it's a great way if you don't hurt yourself. Great way to hold a fish or a bird on a base. You can see how when we say, I know a lot of people question when we say we'll take out, you know, 10, 15 fish skins in a day on a, you know, if we're going to mount fish. But if they're ready like this, um, even if you don't have the artificial heads, even if you have to pose them, um, right. you can actually mount. Now there's a whole lot to do in between the drying stage and the, you know, given to the customer stage, but uh, you can get them into a drying stage the mounting part of it, um, Absolutely. we could easily do four, five, six fish a piece in a day if everything goes well. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Now, it's it would be worth your time to double check your skin to fin unions, make sh making sure that your skin is going to dry right up to the edge of your fins. We'll do there. Do you use artificial fins for most of your fish? Typically not. Typically we use the real fins. We like the uh, real fins. We have good tail? success with them. Um, we use the real fins. And it, oh, here comes our storm. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey. Uh, the real fin, if it's in good shape, uh, we do real well. We preserve them with, I mean, we reinforce them with silk span. And we can turn out a pretty nice looking fin. Absolutely, um, but they do take as much work as the head does. Take a lot of work in rebuilding. You're not just gonna, you're not saving a whole bunch of time, but um, um, we go to a lot of effort to uh, save our fins. But we can't always do that. We do like, uh, I don't know. I enjoy the artificial fins when we get the opportunity to use them because uh, you can shape them and put motion in them mm -hmm. a little bit easier than you can on the the. Nice real fin. fin, although you can do it on the real fin also, and we like we like to use them. And we never used to have them. If we had a damaged fin on a, a fish, we would back a piece of cardboard and try to make a fish fin, and it yeah. usually didn't look as good as the fish's fin. Looks 
He's, He's missing, missing quite a few. few. <laughs> He's missing a few. And those fins will come off and on. Um, we like, like to uh, paint them before. If we're painting the body, a lot of times we'll paint the body separate from the fins. And then you're going to have a little attachment place where you put the fin on. You're going to have to putty that and repaint that. But it's nicest if you're not getting overspray when you're painting the fin all over, yeah. all over the fish's body and you're getting yellow from the fan onto the belly white. Yes, yes ma'am. John Anderson would like to know if you pin the edge of the skin so it doesn't pull away from the fins as it dries. I would. Yep, you certainly can. That's a good point. John? Uh, pin it. We sometimes will glue them. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't hurt to get some of your fish glue. Your fish glue will glue will dry very, very slow. It gives you a little bit more time. Um, if it's up where you want it, super glue, once the skin is dried a little bit, is pretty helpful. Mm -hmm. And we've also mounted the fish with his bad fins. Um, you know, like we've mounted fish like this that we're gonna put artificial fins on, um, spread them like they would on the real fish, let them dry. That way the skin around here is already shaped and instead of like Brett took the scalpel and scissors and cut this out, um, you're gonna take a scalpel and carefully cut that dried, that skin will be as thin as leaf, a uh, dried up leaf. So you're gonna cut it real careful and take this off, but the skin that leads up here is already there and shaped for you and dried. Um, so that can work for you. So you're gonna well keep too. the original fins for another time or no? These um, I would look through here and I would see what we have for fins and there's nothing nicer than to have that fin dried in a box. Um, we have, I have a whole box of fins I just put away because you always have fish that need a fin. Yes. And, and you, you spread them out and preserve them, dry them on your Yeah, own. dry them. And then uh, when I decide, I mean this could, I can make a pelvic fin out of this. I can make a uh, pectoral fin even though it's a pectoral fin, I can use it and shape it for something different. I could cut out a wedge of it and I can glue it in a tail piece. Um, this tail is broken pretty bad and if I had a box full of fins, I could make a pattern of that and I could, with a little bit of care, I could patch in a piece like that. Absolutely enough so that with a little paint on it, um, it would fool a customer pretty well. Somebody once said taxidermy is nothing more than smoke and mirrors. <laughs> it's like, a, you're like a magician. You're trying to make it look like a largemouth bass. Um, something I've had a lot of luck with also, um, was it John Anderson that was asking? Um, you're talking about keeping this together on competition fish, once that skin dries, after mm, half hour or so that skin's gonna dry, I've taken little pieces of uh, masking tape or duct tape and spread it across the opened up fin like Band-Aids. Band-Aid, okay. Yep, and like butterfly mm -hmm. stitches or whatever they call it. And when you go to take them off, it's gonna leave sticky residue, take a little bit of alcohol or lacquer thinner, and it'll wipe right off your skin. That has worked really good for me to hold that incision together. Um, I was in a seminar with Jeff Morning not too very long ago, and he sews right across them. Sure. Um, sews it up. Just to hold it together. Them. And then cuts it out? Cut sure. It. Yep. Sure, yep. sure. Um, so lots of ways to go about that, but uh, this has worked pretty well for us. And uh, geez, your promotion for the DVDs last year, or last week, oh my yeah. went like, Crazy. We got, so we now have the mullein cast and the white tail DVD in stock and ready to ship. Most everybody that placed their order for Father's Day, whether it was for yourself or for somebody else, they pretty much all went out, I would say, Monday, Tuesday, and then the last of the sale Wednesday. So you should That's be exciting. getting those in time. There's going to be at least a hundred happy fathers. <laughs> yes, there was a lot. Um, we do have the 15% off the sale for today of the things that you guys were talking about. Your 
staple gun, the thin carding system, acrylic caulk, critter clay, Euro pins, T pins, white porcelain fish clay, paper clips. So remember to take advantage of the 15% off sale with that. Um, and that goes through tomorrow night. And a big happy Father's Day to all oh, the yeah, dads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father's Day is coming. Yep. Um, do they have to do anything for the sale? Do they have to put in a code? F book 15 is a code on our website or if you call it. And that, speaking of staple guns, I didn't spend much time on the staple guns, but those of you that are using a spring-loaded handle, um, I remember not being able to afford a pneumatic air-driven staple gun like this. And, and once you get a pneumatic staple gun, you'll think you died and went to heaven. It is yes, the it nicest will. thing for stapling off the back of your deer. Um, Habitat. You'll find some habitat. You'll find so many uses for it. Um, we just use it all the time, but uh, it'll save you hours and hours and hours, and it'll pay for itself over and over. Um, Eugene wants to know what your favorite thing to mount is. Mm. You're looking at a couple of fish guys right here. I do like fish. I really do. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think. I think one time. I'm just gonna. This is going to ruffle some fur. It's going to ruffle some feathers. Um, Brian Hellman, who was hiring people for Cabela's, I think, said that when anybody comes and applied for a job, he would ask for samples of their work. And I might not have the story right, but I will paraphrase a little bit. And he said, told them to bring their fish because you can fluff feathers and you can fluff fur, but you can't hide anything out of fish. Your work's either good or bad. And I've always liked, I like that, you know? Yeah, that's very, um, very true. We like fish, but we do a lot of things here. We've uh, we've got, oh man, we've got deer coming out of the wall. We've been mounting on the new XP forms. If you haven't tried them, take it from both of us. Absolutely. Um, there's not a better form on the market than the XP um, semi-sneaks. They're great. Um, mm -hmm. New sneak came out last sneak week. I think that right and left. In a seven and a half, 19 by 21. Very excited to get his skin on that. You can't wait to a, a customer to want one to do yeah. it. Um, but those deer, I don't want to say mount themselves because I did lay a cape out there and watched and it doesn't happen. <laughs> but um, I've seen a fish guy make one go together and look like a deer. They look like over and deer. over and over and over. They do look like you know, they're, they're awful nice. They fit beautifully. Um, so we like those. Um, we got a moose going here. We got uh, a tar going. Um, we've got all kinds of yeah. kinds of exciting things in the shop. Got a big black bear. So we, though our favorite thing, I don't know, something we haven't done for a while. If we have a good skin and nice fur or feathers or whatever it is, we said it. good, good quality animals. They don't have to be monsters. They just have right. to be in good a shape. Good skin. A good deer with nice, no scars. A nice. Bird that's mature. Creative nice poses. Fish. Yep. Yeah. Dallas wants to know if you can paint a copy. Oh, God. what? A copy. Can we paint one? Paint a copy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like that? Yep. Take a look at that copy. We can't paint one any better than that. No, but can't like for live. Oh. <laughs> After you see I thought you meant can we? <laughs> no. Can you? I'm sure we could. That's yeah. not. Yeah. Crappies are. Crappies go together pretty well. People paint um, them too much. We had, that's what I was going to say. We had um, some people ask about skinning them. Maybe we can do a crappie for them sometime, but they paint really nice. They paint up nice if you don't overpaint them. I've never been afraid to skin a crappie ever, but I'm a little challenged to skin one on live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We do a lot of crappies. We have a we lot of crappies. Do. And this year we're going to have just as many or more than last. Yeah, pile them already. And what's next week? Mm. Um, probably carry on on this. We need to get him Wrap to a painting up. stage. Yeah, there there'll probably be two to three more sessions before he's. We can do it in three, right? I hope so. Oh, look at that! Your giveaway. Remember to like, share, and tag them in the video. Don't forget to share it. That's how we pick our winners. And our winner from last week. And what are you giving away? Um, this is set up three scrapers. Um, you can use them on anything. They're great for fish. 
Um, they're sharpened on the edge. You can even sharpen them more, but they're real good for getting into little areas. There's three different configurations. And One the, set for the whole, the whole works. And the winner is Lisa Denny. Lisa, Lisa Denny. congratulations. You're gonna like your little scrapers. Uh, you can actually, they're, I think they're clay sculpting tools yep. adapted they to for clay. Um, scraping. They work really good on fish. You can use them on small mammals, little tissue around eyes and noses. Um, we use these all the time. They're pretty handy little tools. And that is the 0307 KC. Um, you have another request to show how not to lose scales on a copy. Okay. Do you do have it. any tricks, verbal tricks? Verbal tricks. Um, yes, and we discussed this last week. We always used to, uh, first of all, on a crappie, my goal is the show side. I am not concerned about the back side of the fish. If I lose scales on the back side of the fish, it goes against the wall. I'm not concerned about it. So I am concerned about the show side of the fish, and don't bend it. You don't want to bend it, first of all. I have seen everything done. We used to take a dried piece of newspaper, lay it out, take the wet crappie, Put it on the newspaper and the newspaper because of the fish slime will stick to the crappie that's how we always skin crappies and it worked fine and pretty soon we did away with the newspaper and you just get the hang of not bending the skin you can't bend that show side of the skin um, from there our big challenge was with students because students bring some pretty nice crappies and sometimes they go home with scaleless crappies so um, denatured alcohol, just, you know, cheap old alcohol that you get from the hardware store. You can soak your fish after you make the pattern, soak the fish in it, uh -huh. um, cut him, and you will feel the skin is real stiff. As soon as you feel with your fingers as you're working on him, the skin start to soften up back into the alcohol yeah. bath. And it only takes, what, oh, three minutes, two minutes? Yeah. And it sets those scales again keep going and you'll probably put him back into the alcohol, uh, I'd say five, six times maybe. Yep. Um, my issue with the alcohol is it really is hard on the fins and um, it dries them up, it eats the webbing and things like that. But it does hold your scales very, very well. Um, if I wanted a student to make sure he doesn't lose any scales, I would tell him to coat it with Elmer's glue. Paint mm -hmm. the whole fish with Elmer's glue hang it up by the mouth in front of a fan, the dead fish, let it dry. Um, I like two coats. Before you skin it. Before you skin it. So you've actually glued the outside of a fish with a flexible glue. I have even not got to them that day and put them in the refrigerator, not that thinking, oh, nice. now what am I gonna do? I, you know, And that's even better yet. Yes. The next day you take them out and they're actually glued really nice and firm and anybody can skin a crappie without losing scales. And then once they're ready to mount, soak them in water, and that whole two coats of Elmer's glue will come off in one crappie looking sheet. Um, it works very good, it works good. John Anderson, that just asked a question, did that class, the last class? It's a, it's a hassle, it's a very, it's a hassle to do, and you have to paint them, and you have to wait so if you have several fish to do, do it on a crappie, let him hang and forget about it until it dries. Yep. Okay. All right, so stay tuned next week. You can check us out online, www.spinchuskataxonary.com or call us 1-800-488-3256. And don't forget to take advantage of the 15% off sale through tomorrow. And we've been talking about doing something for Father's Day, so stay tuned on our social media sites for that. And have a great day. Father's Day weekend. Happy Father's, Happy Father's Day. Day. Thanks for tuning yep. in. And uh, we will get finished with this in a couple more sessions and we'll be on to bigger things, bigger and better things.